Hi, everybody. So good to see you this week. I hope you are having a good start to your week. I am, I definitely am because I am so excited about today's guest. If you are a follower of my YouTube channel, you will undoubtedly recognize her. It is the wonderful Dr. Marjorie Nigro. She is a board certified dermatologist from the esteemed Nigro Dermatology Group right here in Houston, Texas. Her practice is dedicated to medical, cosmetic, and surgical dermatology. Today, we are diving into an incredibly important topic, and that is the care of our skin, especially as we go through midlife. And I know I'm speaking for a lot of us who have been through the 80s and the big tanning phase, so there are some really important discussions to have here today. We are going to talk about the importance of skin checkups becoming paramount, not to mention the significance of monitoring our skin's health at home. Dr. Marjorie Nigro is here today to impart invaluable, potentially life-saving insights that are sure to have a lasting impact. Hey there, you know staying healthy is always a top priority for me. I believe in taking care of my body. It's not just about living longer, it's about living better. That's why I'm absolutely thrilled to tell you about a game changer in my daily routine, Puri. Puri's O3 Ultra Pure Fish Oil undergoes rigorous third-party testing by the Clean Label Project and IFOS against more than 200 contaminants. Put your health first with Puri. Right now, Puri is offering my listeners this amazing deal, 20% off site-wide. Go to my special URL, puri.com slash over 50, and use my promo code over 50. This even applies to the already discounted subscriptions. You'll get almost a third off the price. Go to P-U-O-R-I.com slash over 50. Don't wait. Use promo code over 50 at puri.com slash over 50. Marjorie, I am so glad that you're back with me. I just want you to know that the one, well, we've done several videos together, <laughs> but the one YouTube video that we did on the retinoid versus retinol yeah. was so impactful. You gave so much information to my audience about the difference between the two to help them decode and decipher Wonderful. where to start, what it means, you know, what what's the difference. And you know, anytime I see you, you know, I see you, my son has seen you all of his life. We were just talking about yes. our kids. And we I go back a long. We go back a long, long time. And I just thought, you know, dermatology is a field and a subject that encompasses so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, we focused a lot on cosmetic, yeah. but I really want to dive into the health aspects yes. of yes. dermatology. It's so important. You shared something with me when you came here tonight before we had dinner. Um, you told me that very few people come in for skin checks. Why? Yes. It's, unfortunately, I think it's all about people not knowing how important it is to have a skin check with a dermatologist at least once a year. You know, pigmented lesions, I mean moles, they develop all your life. They, you can get new moles at age 10, 20, 30, 50, 70, and uh, you never know what you're going to get during this year. So the American Academy of Dermatology really recommends once a year, go to the dermatologist, do what we call the skin check. That's a time where we check your skin from head to toe. We look at moles in your scalp, chest, back, mm -hmm. in between your toes, fingers. And many, many times we're going to point out something to you like, what about this mole over here? And you're going to say, I don't know. Has it been there for a long time? Mm -hmm. I didn't even pay attention. Moles like that, that are new, that you don't know if they were there before, that have some characteristics that we as dermatologists doing this, you know, 30 times a day for, for me now, 35 years, we kind of know this mold doesn't look good. You know, there's several rules. One rule that we call is the rule of the ugly duckling mold. Hmm. So that means a mold that stands out. Right. You look at your arm and everything is more or less the same color, the same shape and all that. And then all of a sudden you have this one 
dark, weird shape that doesn't match any other moles, those should be observed, those mm. should be removed, those should be analyzed under biopsies. And that's going to save you so much trouble in the future. Melanomas are really, a, that's the worst type of skin cancer you can have. It is 100% preventable. If you had seen a dermatologist before, you would have caught it in the stage of pre-melanoma or a dysplastic nevi, the stage where it wasn't even cancer, and we remove mm. them, we take care of them, a pathology sent, you know that the small is gone and you don't have to worry about that. So people that are particularly at risk are people who have a family history of melanoma or other kinds of skin cancers, people who have had a lot of sun exposure over the years, mm -hmm. uh, people with very light skin, but I don't mean to say that dark skin is not susceptible. I see lots and lots of precancers and cancers mm -hmm. in dark skin like mine or even darker. So all of us should have at least one skin check a year, and then we will know what's the risk. I see some patients, I say, listen, you have to come every four months. You have too many, you get too much sun. And I see patients that I say, wow, you're in really good shape. You don't sunbathe a lot. You have very few moles. Come here every two years. And that is such an easy procedure to do. Insurance companies all cover for full skin mm -hmm. checks. We call that the full body check. It's like a well check when you it's go to your regular well GP. Check. It's covered by your insurance with a dermatologist at least once a year. And if the dermatologist decides you need more, it's covered for as many as you need for the year. So mm -hmm. it always surprises me when I offer a patient, because you know, I get a lot of patients that come in for cosmetics. and There's not one patient that I don't offer. Have you had a skin check over the past year? No. Don't you want to do it today? We're here. It's easy. And I'm always surprised by the number of patients that say, no, thank you. I don't have time really? or not today. I will come later. And it's just like, and okay, you're right there. I'm right there. And how long does it take to do a oh full my check? Gosh. You take off your clothes, put a hospital medical gown, and it's done in, what, 10 minutes, 15 maybe, if you need to have a biopsy, another 5 to 10 minutes, mm -hmm. and you could really save your lives. Yeah. And now, as I was telling you, Dominica, earlier today, the majority of skin cancers I find in people are pre-cancers, are patients that came there for just, oh, I just have a nail problem, a hair problem, I just want Botox, I just want, and I never let anyone leave my office without offering them a full body check. Mm -hmm. You don't have a time today. Okay, so let's do that in two weeks. Let's do that in four weeks. Yes. Insurance will cover for that. And it's very interesting to me and to a lot of my dermatology friends and in my practice, all of us offer skin checks for every cosmetic medical patient, all of them. The majority of patients say, no, thank you. And yeah. it's like, that's surprising it, to me since you're is. already there. And I would have thought that would have been the number one reason to go in and see a dermatologist <laughs> in the first place. I know. You know, so, okay. So you talked about melanoma. I know there's basal cell Squamous, squamous cell, cell. And they're dysplastic nevi. Okay. Dysplastic nevi are moles uh, where the cells are irregular. They are not malignant. Mm -hmm. They're just funny looking. Mm -hmm. So it are, they are cells that when you biopsy them and the pathologists look at it, the way I explain to my patients is like this. Our skin should look under the microscope like a perfect brick wall. Mm -hmm. Every single brick is the same size, the same shape. It is disposed in a line with the same amount of cement in between them. This is a completely benign mole. So people like that can skip a year or two of a derm visit, no problem. Once the pathologist looks at that brick wall and sees like all oh, these bricks are rectangular, mm -hmm. all of a sudden there's a round brick, a triangular brick, a brick upside down. Those are called dysplastic. That means basically different yes. than all your other normal cells. They count them and they create an average of them. So let's say if less than 25% of your bricks 
are irregular. Mm -hmm. This is a mild or light dysplastic mole. That means nothing. Very few cells are weird or different. Everything else is regular. You're good. If half of them are irregular shaped and has a different pattern, this is a moderate dysplastic nevi. Moles like that should be removed again. So we do a biopsy, we find out it's a moderate, we call you, we tell you, come in, let me remove just a little bit more around. Like a border. A border of them mm -hmm. to make sure no dysplastic is left behind that could grow in the future. Right. That's easy. And then we have the severely dysplastic ones considered by many people as a pre-melanoma. That means 75% or more of your keratinocytes or cells are irregular. Those mean the majority of your mole pigmented lesion was irregular. So the chance of one of those weird cells becoming malignant. And what does it mean becoming malignant? Start to proliferate fast, 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 and invade the tissues around uh -huh. is very high. So a dysplastic is not a cancerous, but when you have more than 75% irregular, you could develop a melanoma in no time. Mm -hmm. So that's why people like that, I put them in a surveillance of every six months. Right. So if you developed one of those, you might do that in the future. So we'll check you every six months and then I can guarantee you that everything is good so you don't have to worry anymore. What's the difference between a raised mole and one that's flat on flat. the skin? Generally, of course, the only difference you can really see under the microscope, but in general, raised moles are not as bad That's because the mole is great. And those are the moles that people worry about yes, more because the they stick out of yes. your skin, right? In general, those moles are benign because they are growing outwards. So they don't worry us as much as the moles that are flat and going inward ah. because the roots of those moles could be trying to get deep into your skin. So sure, we check all of them and I've had puffy moles in the past that were precancers, and I've had flat moles completely fine. But the uh, general rule is moles that go out mm -hmm. are more towards seborrheic keratosis that are just uh, uh, accumulation of cell over cell over cell over cell, and they look weird and rough, but they're all benign, versus moles that are completely flat, but they're too dark, their borders are weird, mm -hmm. their pigmentation is weird, they're changing, they don't match anything close to them. I always tell patients when they ask me over the phone, do you, do, does your mole have brothers and sisters around them? If they do, the likelihood of being malignant is much smaller. Mm -hmm. You don't develop five, six melanomas in the same area of your body. Interesting. But if they say, is that one mole on my leg? Come in. Let's yeah. get rid of that because we don't know if it's calling your attention. Most likely your immune system is calling you uh, about that mole. Interesting. You know, it's so fascinating to me because you're normally going in to get the big ones removed. So I'm yes. going to ask you about that <laughs> removal process okay. on the backside of this quick break on Over 50 and Flourishing. Hey there, you know staying healthy is always a top priority for me. I believe in taking care of my body, making sure I'm getting all the essential nutrients it needs and steering clear of the hidden nasties that seem to lurk in so much of the food and products we consume these days. It's not just about living longer, it's about living better. That's why I'm absolutely thrilled to tell you about a game changer in my daily routine, Puri. Let me share a little secret with you. I've been taking omega-3 supplements for years now, and for the longest time, I thought those unpleasant fishy burps were just kind of part and parcel of the deal. But then I discovered Puri. They use the freshest, highest quality fish, so you get all the incredible benefits of omega-3 without any unwanted taste or smell. It's been a game changer for me. No more fishy surprises. Now, why do I personally take omega-3? Well, omega-3 is fantastic for supporting my heart brain, and eyes. It's like a daily boost for my overall well-being. And with Puri, I don't have to worry about harmful toxins or contaminants. It's pure and clean, just as nature intended. But let me tell you what really sets Puri apart from the rest. They're all about transparency. When they say their products are pure, 
they mean it. Puri's O3 Ultra Pure Fish Oil undergoes rigorous third-party testing by the Clean Label Project and IFOS against more than 200 contaminants. And here's the kicker. Every Puri product comes with a QR code so you can scan it and see the test results for your specific batch. Now that's transparency you can trust. Put your health first with Puri. Right now, Puri is offering my listeners this amazing deal, 20% off site-wide. Go to my special URL, puri.com slash over 50, and use my promo code over 50. This even applies to the already discounted subscriptions. You'll get almost a third off the price. Go to puri.com slash over 50. Don't wait. Use promo code over 50 at puri.com slash over 50. Welcome back to today's episode of Over 50 and Flourishing. I have Dr. Marjorie Nigro, who is a top dermatologist here in the Houston area. She's been my go-to doctor for as long as I can remember, my son's doctor his entire life. We are talking skincare. We've been talking about the different types of cancers, signs to look for, um, flat moles, raised moles. And during the commercial break, okay, so I'm literally, I'm covered from head to toe in long sleeve because... I knew you'd be coming, and uh -huh. I just got back from Mexico. <laughs> and okay, yeah, so I did. I know you. you're watching, and I did SPF 50, but I still Butch. came home with a ton of freckles and spots, which I know we're going to talk about later. But yeah. I wanted, I was showing Marjorie. So for those of you who are listening, I'm showing her this spot on my calf that really, really started to come out after my trip in Mexico. Good. Yeah. So the deal with the spot, spots in general, right? are what I was telling you. First of all, we see the color. Are the other moles around that a little right. bit in the same tone? And on Dominique's leg, they are pretty much the same tone. This it's one like is a, a little lighter bit color. bigger. It's bigger. It's a little bigger. Yeah. And uh, the deal with that mole is, of course, she just came back from Cancun. Uh, Cancun? Um, no. Cabo, but close Cabo. enough. Oh, <laughs> Somewhere nice. in Mexico. Yes. yes. <laughs> and you know what happens is the sun really expands some moles like that. It doesn't have any features of a pre-malignant or malignant mole. The mm -hmm. borders are regular. Pigmentation is the same one throughout the mole. It doesn't have one side darker or lighter than the other side. The pigmentation is the same. And uh, the, a little bit of growth when you have sun exposure is no problem at all. But sure, when you come for your skin check, we'll check on that again. <laughs> of course if we're we going to do that. If we think change, yes. we're going to remove it. Okay, so <laughs> tell me, how do you remove... Obviously, the, the raised moles, I remember they would be scraped off. Yes. But how do you remove something that's Same flat? Thing. So uh, biopsies, skin biopsies, people are so afraid of skin biopsies. And really, what I tell them, it is really the equivalent mm. of you getting your nail and scratching a layer of skin out of your skin. That's mm -hmm. all we get you. We don't need it to go deep in anyone's skin to diagnose a mole. All the pathologist needs is a few layers of skin so he can look at what we talk like this brick wall and make sure all the bricks are in the some, same place. So all we do is we have a very sharp a blade shaped, let's say like a spoon, mm -hmm. and we go just very superficially and we scratch that top layer of the skin. Send it to the biopsy and the pathologist is going to get that teeny tiny piece of skin. Put it on a uh, liquid wax, like mm. soft candle wax, and uh, harden it. So you pretty much have a piece of a candle with a skin piece floating in the middle, hmm. right? With that, when it's hard, it uses a microscopic cold cut cutter. Just the same as you see at Kroger Central Market, but of course, much smaller than that. <laughs> but for your skin. For your skin. Okay. So he gets the block and he goes over that and he cuts it in hundreds of little pieces. Huh. He puts those pieces in glass slides and he runs them through the microscope. And of course, with the experience of a dermatopathologist, they can see hundreds of those in like a minute. Mm. And they can see all the cells. They can completely stop in any abnormality and get that and stop that and just count how many abnormal cells are there. Right. So after a biopsy, they come to me with a diagnosis that they say that this is a dysplastic mole, but very mild. This is a dysplastic nevi, 
moderate. And I know they saw half of the cells were abnormal. Mm -hmm. And when they say severe, I know more than 75% of those cells were abnormal. So the rules of the American Academy is any dysplastic, moderate or severe, we should go back. Then we call the patient, we tell them they have a little bit of abnormal cells, not terrible, they're just 50% abnormal. We just wanna make sure no, no bad cell was left behind. So come in, we'll just go around. And that's a little a small surgery where we numb you and we go around the area of the biopsy, remove all those cells, put a couple stitches and send it back to the pathologist. Mm -hmm. They're gonna match that with your biopsy, make sure it's all gone. Right. So they call me and they say, this is margins free. What do they mean by margins free? No cell remains on your skin. So that means you're completely cured. You're cured. You never can say you had a skin cancer. The plastic mold is not a skin cancer. Mm -hmm. So you're still in the non-skin cancer population, but you should come back to see us every six months where we're going to go around your body again, make sure nothing else stands out. So those patients become, you know, part of the family. So every six months they're there. We yep. look at everything. We teach them how to look at their own skin, how to spot something. And they become their big advocates. Your own advocate. Yeah. When you get they, scared a little bit, you do. Yes. Yes. And that's a good thing. So yeah. I have lots of patients calling my nurse. You know, I saw something there. I'm not sure if he was there before. Great. Come in. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem at all. We work with uh, two, three physician's assistants who do a type of exam called dermatoscope. That is an amazing exam. They can get to the moles 70% as much as doing a biopsy. So they put a handheld microscope on the moles that sometimes I'm not very comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And they tell me, you know what, biopsy this one. I see a few irregular cells. They can't, of course, see the same as a pathologist. So it's almost neck. like looking through and having a lab experience in a smaller scale that's exactly to help right. you decide what to do moving yes. forward. So they can do that, and that saves you a lot of biopsies. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, sometimes I look at a moon, and I'm like, ooh, this is so dark. Maybe I should remove that. And then they come in, they say, oh, the cells are regular, Dr. Knight. We can wait another mm -hmm. six months. Great. So we save the biopsy. Biopsies leave minimum scarring. It's the same scar you would leave on yourself if you scratched yourself with your nail. Very superficial. Right. And we teach you how to take care of it. And really, it could save your life. Yes. I mean, it's a little something that can make a huge difference. What are the treatments? Should something come back abnormal, abnormal. or cancerous? Mm -hmm. What are the different protocols? Obviously, as you mentioned, there are yeah. different levels. levels. So kind of walk us yes. through that. Uh, so if you have a dysplastic mild, we just tell you come in every six months. There's no reason to remove more moles. Just you watch yourself or watch you every six months. If you have a dysplastic moderate or severe we always bring you back and we remove a little bit more of the skin to mm -hmm. get what we call clear margins. Once you get clear margins, that means you're done. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing remaining. It's not a cancer. You just also come every six months. Once you remove it, and unfortunately, I already went into a melanoma, right? Yeah. So they, the pathologist stages that, okay? Mm -hmm. So what are the stages? Melanoma in situ means it was just on top of the skin. So all we need again is to come in and remove a little bit more skin around it because it didn't have a chance to involve anything under the skin. And then it goes by level, level one, two, three, four. That means how deep it mm -hmm. went into your skin. Uh, up to melanoma's level one, we remove it very easy in the office, no problem, because that means level one is just the first layer of skin. You don't have to worry about metastasis or anything else. Melanoma's level two and deeper, mm -hmm. they have to be removed by a surgeon. The surgeon will have to see how deep they went. Sometimes they want a lymph node to check mm -hmm. because the first thing, if a melanoma tries to send metastasis, it goes into the lymph node and it gets blocked under yes. your arm, your neck, your bikini line. So then they will want to study those lymph nodes to make sure no cells went in there. 
So I work a lot of time with a few uh, plastic surgeons who take care of it. I work with MD Anderson on melanomas that are a little bit thicker, and they take care of them all over there. And it's wonderful how in this day and age, even a thick, thick melanoma can get completely cleared with the right follow-up, hmm. with um, MD Anderson watching you. I've had several patients with Clark Level 4s that are doing extremely well after many, many years, but they are monitored by me, by MD mm -hmm. Anderson. We stay on top of every single mole. Make sure you don't develop another one. So it is, nowadays we have lots and lots that can be done. Yeah, aside from the surgery, is there uh, a treatment that's done as well? For deeper melanomas, yes. Yeah. Uh, and those are done by MD Anderson and oncology. Uh, in derm, we treat all the way up to level ones. Okay. And that those, if I get clear margins, you're in good shape. You're good. And I just make you come in every three to four months for a good two to three years until I'm sure nothing else is left behind. Uh, on patients with the other type of skin cancer, more the sun-related skin cancers mm -hmm. that are the basal cells and the squamous cell carcinomas, those, yes, those we remove the cancer, same thing, and we prescribe to them a form of chemotherapy uh, that is based on a drug called 5-fluoracil. That is a drug that finds more precancers on the skin. Is it oral? It is topical. Oh, it's topical. It is topical chemotherapy. That's it's unusual. Really wonderful. And uh, what happens is you remove the lesion, make sure the borders are clear, but then you look at them and they have other lesions. You're not very sure. And you don't want to start biopsying a hundred things. So I tell these patients, let's do topical chemo. And what they do is a cream that they apply to the area, let's say your forehead. You apply to your entire forehead every night for two weeks, mm. right? During those two weeks, the cream is going to attack abnormal cells. And they are generally cells that are multiplying really fast. So the cells that multiply very normal and calmly are not affected by the creams. The cells that are moving crazy are affected. And uh, those cells get basically poisoned by the cream, just mm -hmm. like a chemotherapy would do. They absorb the cream and they die. So for the period of two weeks, you might have red dots on the area you're treating because those are the cells that are dying. Mm -hmm. But at the end of a session of like two weeks, 70 to 80% of the precancer cells are dead. And so it doesn't harm the good cells? Does not harm the good cells. Yeah. So you pretty much kill all those cells without the need of a biopsy, without waiting for them to become cancers. So really they are the streamline of therapy for all my patients that have a sun-dependent um, cancers like basal cells and squamous right. cells. And I pretty go slowly and slowly to you, I go through your whole body. I do your forehead, then I do your cheeks and your nose. I do your chest for all the tennis players that have so many precancers there yeah. before they turn into cancers. Because once they're cancers, I mean, scar, scar, scar. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very hard for a basal cell or squamous cell to penetrate inside your body and give you a metastasis. But still, you end up with scars all over your body. So it's so much nicer to prevent that by doing the creams, guys that are bald, the mm -hmm. top, the of, top of the heads head. that are all rough. We do that with uh, uh, the fluoroseal. And it works wonders. I mean, it's two weeks that you don't look your greatest. Right. But we always talk to them, you know, wear a hat. And for the women, just wear your bangs on your forehead or <laughs> right. comb your hair. Hair forward. Kind of wear a baseball cap. Do what you got to do. Two weeks. Yeah. And wear a T-shirt covering your chest. And you know that at the end of two weeks, 70 to 80% of precancer cells are dead. I think yeah. this is like... That's remarkable. Is this a relatively new treatment? No. It's been around Dominique, for a long time. That's the sad part. Really? When I was a resident here, my God, 20-something years ago, and a resident in Brazil 35 years ago, the cream was already available. Wow. Uh, the problem is in the past, the cream was more concentrated, oh. so the damage was big. So for those, like, two weeks, you 
kind of look like hamburger meat. Oh, boy. So people wouldn't... They wouldn't do it. ...want to do that. Yeah. So the new versions that are out for the past, what, five, six years... So they've they been updated. ...they're attenuated and yeah. updated, so they are not as absorbed as the ones before. Mm. So the damage is still happens. I'm not going to say the damage is zero, but it's much less than what I saw 35 years ago when right. people would come to your office like bleeding because oh, all the skin detached and all of that. But it's the way for you to cure pre-cancers and even the superficial skin cancers, we can kill with that. Yeah. There are patients that are either too elderly or refuse surgery, that if we apply this for ourselves to a superficial cancer, for four to six weeks, you can kill a cancer without the need for surgery. Yeah. So it went a long way. And we have a lot to offer to people if they're willing to go through that. And it is... It Are is, there some tough side effects with that? Uh, side effects, yeah, you look not great. Right, but that's, but that's it? Any internal that's side it. effects that no, are going on? No, we do one yeah. area of the t at a time. Yeah. I've had very uh, patients that are in a hurry, and uh, they decide to do more. Though I, do, I tell them one area at a time. Oh, no, I wanted to go fast, Dr. Nice. So I did my whole face and chest. Wow. Then you can feel like you have the flu because mm -hmm. your immune system is killing so many cells yeah. that you're kind of, oh my God, I think I have a fever thing. So if you do one area at a time, it's just a local discomfort of that skin having your immune system killing cells, you're a little bit swollen, you have some red dots, mm -hmm. and we know what to tell you to use to calm it down, but the results are incredible. Incredible. I mean, you get someone, a, head, a guy with a bald head that is all crusty, and all of those are going to turn out into cancer. You do a couple weeks of fluorocell, they come in, it's all smooth again, like normal skin, wow. and you save yourself so many surgeries. So we, yeah. we love to be able to offer patients that, and we hold their hands. My nurses are ready to talk to them. When they're like, it looks there, boys. Are, no worries. This is so much better than all the surgeries you mm -hmm. would get. And I tell patients, you apply something of that in an area you never had sun damage. So if you apply a little of that in your buttocks, it's a moisturizer. Nothing Interesting. happens. Wow. No normal cells don't absorb it. Okay. So it really works well. Interesting. Well, so we've been talking about diagnosing and treating, but now after this commercial break, <laughs> I really want to focus on prevention because <laughs> you're Brazilian and Please. I grew up in the 80s. So yes. you know what that meant. That's Sun, great. sun, and more yes. sun. And we're yes. going to talk about that after this break. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back. It's it's nighttime. We're taping this podcast, um, which is unusual for me to do it. For <laughs> us. But it's like nine o'clock at night. So we've already had dinner. We're we're onto our glass of wine, but I'm I'm toasting you for providing such invaluable information to this audience, thank you. Marjorie. Yes, and um, thank you for putting it out there. I'm so glad you wanted to talk about this oh, today. It's just critical. You know, we've we focus so much on the beauty side sure. of skin and and we're going to talk, we'll, we'll dive a little bit into um, certain things that present in midlife and what sure. we can do about it. But that's that's been solely the focus and rarely is the focus on just skin checks, well checks, what, what if, what are the names of these things, how to treat these things, what to do. So everything up to this point has been okay, you find something suspicious, uh -huh. what do you do about it? What are your options? And I'm so glad you've walked us through in detail. But I really want to talk about prevention. Sure. For, I mean, look, okay, <laughs> I, I went to Mexico and I did my sunscreen and I did my SPF 50, but look, my friend, it was beautiful. And I was out all day, of course, all day. And I kept reapplying and I came back with spots everywhere, no matter how high that sunscreen was. So Look, I mean, we're still going to get out there. We're yes. still going to enjoy. Mm -hmm. How do we strike a balance between, between enjoying yeah. the sun? Mm -hmm. It's not like we're doing this all the of time. Course. And course. also sunscreens. And I really want to talk about different types of sunscreens. You know, a lot of people want to focus on natural and mineral. So there's so much to dive into. And I'm uh -huh. just going to let you dive. That's cool. Okay. So 
basically I'm from Brazil, so I did my fair share of uh, skin damaging <laughs> as I was growing up. And the reality is, in our time, sunscreen was kind of like the wild guy out there. You mm -hmm. know, no one really it was thick and about white. It. Remember the white it stripe was gross across the nose? And it was white and it was thick. And basically in the 70s and 80s when we grew up, it was just like, go get a collar. Even our parents would say, you're so pale, go outside. Yeah, exactly. Go get some sun. That's, that's it. Go get some sun. So yeah. no one really knew. Sunscreens has started to get better and better in the 80s and 90s. And then research showed all all the skin cancers and all the prevention we could do mm -hmm. by uh, wearing sunscreen. So now we are in a place that I, I consider ideal, where we are, where we know about the risks, and we have amazing options for protection. I mean, it's not like what we used to have in the 70s and 80s. We have sunscreen that you can barely see it. You can mm -hmm. apply it. It's, it feels good. It's not that grease and smelly sticky, yes. and sticky stuff. So uh, I would say we can really protect ourselves and be out there. I still go to Brazil a couple times a year to see my family and my friends. I still travel. I love the beach. Mm -hmm. I was this summer with my daughter in Greece for two weeks at the beach every day. Yep. And I can tell you, I was able to keep the burning zero. Mm -hmm. Now, me and my daughter, who's lighter than me, uh, had very, very little uh, sun burning and even tanning, very, very little. But it's really something you have to decide you're committed to. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a little bit of a change in lifestyle because people at this day and age, even people our age, Dominic, are still so addicted to tanning, to not protecting themselves. They like the look of tanning. Well, I'm addicted to self-tanning. Right? There are so many options. Oh That's gosh. the beauty. I tell this to patients every day, be tanned. It's wonderful. It looks beautiful. There are so many self-tanners out there that are natural, that look good. Yeah. A self-tanner is basically painting your skin. Mm -hmm. It's not toxic. It's not going to do any damage to you. The only damage it does is the to your smell. palms. If you don't <laughs> the palms wash, your you have yellow palms the next day, and that's <laughs> kind of not a good look. Yeah. And if you apply in skin uh, that there's a lot of dead skin, let's say knee, mm -hmm. elbows, where you have a lot of dead skin accumulated, they, they get much darker. Right. So I always recommend before uh, self-tanning to the body, do a light exfoliation mainly on areas with a lot of dead, dry skin, like the knees, elbows. So then you don't have that caking of the fake tanners. Mm -hmm. But other than that, they're healthy. You can apply them every night if you want. I do a wonderful self-tanner to the face every mm -hmm. night. I put my retin-A on and a self-tanner. You wake up with some form of color that absolutely didn't damage your skin at right. all. Right. How much SPF do we need do when we we're need? going outside? So it depends on your type of lifestyle, right? For people who go from their houses to their car, to work, back, pick up a kid, go to the supermarket, any uh, form of sunscreen around 30 is good enough. Mm -hmm. um, the, the formulation of the sunscreen is even more important than the level of sunscreen. So walk us through that. Uh, so we have sunscreens that are very thin and very cosmetically accepted. And those are not as resistant as the thick sunscreen. So I always tell my patients I have two kinds, one for sports mm -hmm. and one for going out and putting makeup on. What is the sports sunscreen? The stick formulations are the best. Huh. Neutrogena has a stick formulations, uh, Burt's Bees, um, Sun Balm, anyone that is in a stick looks like a mini deodorant. Is it you because know, when it's you roll thicker? It. It's thicker mm. and it's made with wax. Mm. Wax is, sticks to you, resists water, and it stays in your skin for much longer. So if you're a tennis player like several of my patients are, do the stick all over your chest, your neck, your face, and you're going to notice even after a match as you sweat like crazy, you're going to touch yourself, you're going to feel that wax is still on you. Mm. So for sports, you need something like that. Uh, for 
pretty days or just going to put your sunscreen and drive to work or go to an event outside and all of that, then you need thinner formulations. Mm -hmm. You're not going to put a stick and you can't put sunscreen over that No, you stick. can't put makeup on over you that either. You can't do that. So I recommend the natural mineral SPFs mm -hmm. that are based on titanium. Yep. Uh, or zinc oxide, yeah. and those formulations are thinner. That means the titanium and the zinc are crushed into lots and lots of very, very small pieces, so they don't go white. Yes, they've gotten much better with much, that. Much, much better. And the ideal sunscreen now in recent research is the tinted ones. Yes. The ones that look like a base They look or a like foundation. a foundation. They're amazing. They're amazing. But don't we need a lot of that to be able I to get full coverage? I would say you need a whole cover of that. Yeah. So I would say the size for your whole face, a real pea, a real pea size on the sponge makeup applicator. You do your skincare first, your creams, your acids, whatever you're using for mm -hmm. your skin. The last layer should be a whole pea size of uh, that sunscreen spread all over, not leaving any skin untouched. So go all the way to the roots of your hair, go on your ear, go under your jaw, because this area, you always yep. stop here, yes. so you end up getting cancers up to your on chin. Your, your chin. So right. go in, and for me, because at my age, I don't want my neck to look older, I go down to the neck too. So a pea is enough or do you do more? If, we're for, doing, if I'm doing the neck another pea? and I do my hands, yes. another pea. Okay. So I do one pea for the face, a second pea size for, I push it down to the neck. Yeah. If I have a big opening on my collar, yep. I do this area too Separately. and the back of my hands. So that's like four so peas. So I would see eight, okay. three to four peas. But listen, those SPFs, they're very affordable. They have lots of them to have mix, they mixed in uh, the foundation sunscreen, uh, also a primer. Yep. So they really work like makeup for mm -hmm. women. You just put that in, you skip your base, and many times you skip a powder too. You're covered up, yep. everything is even, and you look really good. Yeah. Uh, and you are protected. I'm going to tell you, in um, Greece with my daughter, I got one of those for her collar and uh, one of those for me. And we would go to the beach with just that. After an hour, I would reapply a little stick on mm -hmm. top, but you go... We swam, we went to the beach, we did all that. At night, when you were removing it with a face towel for makeup, there was a still pigmentation in. So they were still in after yeah. an entire day mm -hmm. of beach and sun and water. So they really work very well. How often do we need to reapply? Reapply. It depends on how much you sweat. Yeah. If you are someone who doesn't sweat much, you don't need to. In my regular days, I apply one layer mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, at home in the morning. And basically, I'm done the whole day. I use during the day a powder with makeup maybe once around lunchtime. Oh, is that like the Color Science the Powder? The Color Science yes. Powder is wonderful. And yep. now in the market, they have others like that. It's a loose powder mm -hmm. with 50. What's wrong with that? No, you and know? it's like an add-on powder it's on beautiful. top of your foundation. That's it. It gets you polished. When I'm in carpool to pick up my daughter, I just put that on. You never know if you're going to go to a sports event for them or something. I right. always do a layer of that. So for normal days for me, I put the liquid foundation, and uh, I prefer two types. There is one from Skin Renew that is a mineral too, and there's Glow Minerals, the tinted SPF that is also amazing, available in the internet. I use that a lot. Um, and if I'm going to the beach, like I told you mm -hmm. in Greece, I would apply in the morning, reapply the tinted at lunchtime. Yes. And then the rest of the time, I would just do every hour like a little um, stick. Because you go in the water, then you're not very sure. And I'm going to tell you, not me or my dog, we got nothing of some burn, little bit of color, but nothing that would be se sensible. And in the way that I would say, oh my gosh, I just burned all my collagen mm -hmm. that I worked so hard to make. Right. So, and then you put a little sun tanner faker and you're so happy at the end of the day. So yeah. any Tan means damage. Interesting. So when people say, oh, it's just a little bit of scent. Okay, it's just a little bit little of damage. Little witty bit of damage and freckles. <laughs> Don't it. we, but we need vitamin D. So are we still getting vitamin D 
even yes. with all this SPF that we're doing. When we live in a place like Houston, you drive your car to Kroger, that's all you need. You know, when you're going to say on an everyday basis, I'm not sunscreening my leg, I'm not... We are absorbing as much vitamin D as we need. And that even some people, of course, it depends on your system. There are people who really don't absorb vitamin D. Yeah, a lot, most people are low. Most women are low. Yes, yeah. and, and in those cases, you should take vitamin D. It's yeah. a much easier way to absorb vitamin D than to damage your skin, skin. and get skin cancer, mm -hmm. wrinkles, and fine lines by trying to get that from the sun. Right, so there's a happy balance here. Yes, Yes. very much. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you about... Issues that present in midlife, are there, because look, <laughs> okay, I mean, we've talked about the spots and the freckles, but what about things like rosacea or psoriasis, or are there things that just kind of pop up during this season of life that we should be on the lookout for? Rosacea is a big one. It is. Why? It's Why does it pop one. up? And rosacea, of course, is 100% dependent on the amount of sun we've had through our lives. Yes. I have rosacea myself, mm. and you never diagnose a patient with rosacea in their tummy. It's always on the cheeks. Always on the cheeks, and yeah. it's always what we call the butterfly area. You uh, know, yeah. the area where you sunbathe much more when you were a kid. And the unfair thing about the sun is... You don't see it when you're doing it. Right. So sure, when I was 16, 17, 18, I was like yeah, trying to get as tan as I could yep. because you have all this collagen, your skin looks beautiful, you don't even think about wrinkles. Mm -hmm. So then when we start showing damage after age 35, 40, it's kind of too late. You already destroyed that collagen. In rosacea, we are destroying the collagen around the blood vessels. Blood vessels on the face should be all very tight. Mm. You shouldn't see the blood on our faces. The sun thins out the collagen, so the skin on our faces and hands are much thinner yes. than the skin in our tummy. Yep. So I always, when people say, oh, but this is normal for me, it's like, okay, let me see your tummy. Your skin in your tummy and your buttocks should be the skin on your face. When we are born, mm -hmm. a newborn, it's you the look same at them, everywhere. it's the same skin everywhere. We start aging the skin once we start exposing it. So when we look at ourselves, our chest is not the same skin as the tummy, the neck, the mm -hmm. face, the hands. So this is all because of the sun. Our skin is the same age, right? On the face, on the hands, and on our buttocks. It right. should look the same. But the sun aged that skin so much more. Mm. So every time we tan, we are aging. Uh, we are increasing our chances of rosacea. So people who don't have a rosacea background, mom, grandma didn't have rosacea, it's hard that you're going to develop it. But my grandmother had rosacea, and as a kid, I always thought, oh, she's always wearing blush. That's yes, so cute. Yes, the pink cheeks. Yes. <laughs> so, so then you realize, yeah, it was yeah, a not blush. Yeah, so, not so cute. Yeah, not so cute. Yeah. And then it starts happening. Your nose gets red. And the worst type of rosacea is on people where the nose not only gets red, but gets bigger. Mm, so when yes. they look at their pictures, that's called rhinophyma. It is a form of rosacea where the skin on the nose gets thicker. I've, yes, so I've I seen have that. patients that come to me and say, look at my picture 10 years ago, my nose is double the size. Yeah. And it is double the size because the blood vessels on the nose and cheeks are dilating. More blood stimulates more skin growth. So you grow your nose, wow. you grow your cheeks, cheeks to be very puffy and red is it is it the same in men as, as women men and women men and women men is even worse because they don't go to the dermatologist so yeah. by the time they come their nose is enormous mm -hmm. and very uh edematous and big and we have people with really excessive skin to the max can it be treated yes we okay. can treat it Rosacea can be treated with antibiotics, with topicals, and really for the most uh, intense cases, we can treat it with Accutane, and huh. the results are incredible. I mean, you can sh shrink the nose with a course of Accutane by 30%. Can it ever get back to normal? Uh, 
Sometimes yeah. it all depends on how bad it is, and it all depends on how min- how much you respond to Accutane. I just had a patient last week at age over sixty five or something that we were treating for rhinophyma, and he's in month three of Accutane, and he said it's so funny, I can breathe through my nose now. Wow! He didn't even notice you that didn't over even the think years about that. he was getting the nose was getting so big that it was occluding the nostrils, and it was getting difficult to breathe. So when you shrink all that tissue, I, I was so happy to hear that. So you can do that and it works well, but still we need a change in lifestyle. I will not put anybody mm-hmm. on medication unless I see they are coming without a tan, that for a good four, five, six months, they're coming in, they're protecting themselves. Now they play tennis with a visor or a hat. Mm-hmm. They apply the adequate amount of sunscreen because, you know, it's it's worthless to put your body through Accutane. That is kind of a hard medication for yep. four, five, six months. If you're not you're doing your part. And you're still in the sun. I yeah. mean, that works nothing. So you really have to make peace that from now on, the sun, the sun is not your friend. Yeah. You are going to avoid it and protect yourself. I'm not going to say stay inside because I don't. I play tennis too. I run. I do all that, but you will make a point of protecting yourself big time. You make a plan. What else pops up, like broken capillaries? What are some broken other things that we see at so this age? So everyone who has a lot of sun has a lot of redness. Yeah. Very common to have the problems in the neck. Uh. So they come and they say, oh, my neck is so red. It is genetics because my mother had the red. No one has genetics red on the neck. And then the test is lift your chin up. What color is your skin under your chin? Completely perfectly white, right? Because the chin is 100% protected by the shadow of your face. So you have beautiful skin there. So it's not genetics. It's because you had sun over and over. And on the left side of the car, when you're a driver, the left side Mm -hmm. of our face and neck are generally, by research, around five years older than your right side. And the opposite happens in countries like in Japan or England, <laughs> yes, yeah. where they drive in the opposite side. The more damaged uh, side is on the right side. But for us here, left side is much older. There are more spots, more wrinkles, more red spots on the neck because you expose that every day through the windshield getting sun while you're driving. Mm. One thing I've, I've noticed that's happened to me is, and you've treated me for this, um, perioral dermatitis, yes. which is a, a big fancy name for a bunch of little red dots <laughs> that have shown up on my forehead and around my eyes. What yeah. is that, Marjorie? And it's back. So please, you're gonna, I know you're going to tell me it's sun-related and heat-related, yeah, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, it's a little bit of that. Yeah. Uh, but the, the react, that, the the, the reason for that is bacteria from our nose and mouth. Really? When it gets really hot. hot. And it's been and very we hot. Sweat, yeah. The bacteria is able to come out and contaminate the skin around the nose and mouth. So you get those little tiny red bumps, red bumps that some patients say, I have acne around my nose. Right. They kind of look like acne, but they don't have pus. Yeah. So that's why they're not real acne. You call perioral dermatitis because it happens around the mouth we also treat it with antibiotics Mm. and of course some people have a tendency for that so every whatever four months six months during the summer they always get that so for patients like that and for you i always leave you with a little bit of antibiotics for prevention of that so when you know oh i'm gonna go to the beach i'm gonna go Mm -hmm. so like a week before just take a little bit of antibiotics to decrease the bacteria Use a little topical uh, antibiotics at night when you are at the beach to just decrease the bacteria that's coming out so you can prevent that crisis. But it's nothing bad and it always goes away. It's just bumpy and irritated. I had read somewhere that um, that the yeast infection cream actually works on that. Is that true? (laughs) Or is that just some kind of internet myth? (laughs) I was like, okay, well, I mean, if it's true, No, because the bacteria (laughs) is not fungus. Fungus Ah. causes a different type of rash called seborrheic dermatitis. They are red, but they're not bumps. They are red areas with scaling around the the nose nose. and around the mouth. So people confuse them. And yes, 
creams for fungus work on that because yeast populates those areas that are curves I and see. accumulate sweat. Yes. And yeast loves that here, here, sometimes in the corner of the eye. Mm -hmm. So that works. But when you have bumps, not yeast, bacteria. Bacteria. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I guess I need to come in and see you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, friend. Does this count you as an appointment? You have to come visit. Yeah, I'll, I'll check you out before okay. I leave. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, I wanted to ask you because uh, I've done IPL in the past. I know you offer it in your we office. We love IPL, yes. And, and you know, we've, I'm going to link some of the videos. I'm going to link all the videos we've done because we've done, like I said, retinol, retinoid. Mm -hmm. We've done um, Sculptra, Sculptra, which is yes. the collagen. Um, but I wanted to talk about IPL because it, it gets rid of those sunspots. Yes. Yes. But does that help in any way when it comes to skin cancer? Or does cancer, it no. It has no effect. IPL is wonderful. I love it. We do it a lot. And IPL has several layers of IPL. So spas, estheticians, they run IPLs at low potency, and I'm very happy about that. They don't hurt anybody. But of course, low frequency, low results. Yes. So if you have very little to deal with, an IPL in low frequency is going to do very, very well. We can do chest, you can do face. Uh, IPL works in light brown and light red pigmentation. So it's great for rosacea. It's mm. great if you have a little bit of brown spots, but they're not really intense. Mm. If you have this real big brown spots, IPL is not going to do it. You need to use a stronger stuff for that and maybe at the end an IPL to polish. But IPL is what we call intense pulse light. Mm -hmm. That's what IPL means. So it's not a real laser. It's a light that pulses very mm -hmm. intensely. So anyone who had it knows that the light blinks on you. You protect your face with a shield. And what that does is when it's blinking, it gets to the frequency of the red blood vessels of the brown spots and kind of burns them very superficial, very superficial. Very lightly. Very yeah. lightly. So you get the, the light uh, blood vessels to disappear. You get some of the brown spots to look a little bit darker the next day. Then they start peeling. Mm -hmm. So it's for light damage, light brown spots or red spots. When you need something deeper than that, the IPL is not going to do it. So when I see patients with very strong melasma, they have been all over time off, they had 10 IPLs, 11 IPLs, it was never going to work. Mm. The spot is too dark for the IPL. So you needed to work with really intense bleaching creams first, get that skin under much better control, maybe do a skin pen mm -hmm. who does microscopic holes on your skin mm -hmm. deeper than an IPL can get to break the spot and then the icing on the cake would be an IPL to finish it off right. uh, once you're in good shape like for me I already treated my rosacea I have my scalp right once a year I get an IPL just because of course every summer we're bad yes. what are you gonna I say know, so we're spotty I will get you very soon with that so then you kind <laughs> of list, raise, yeah of course we'll make the, the whole recipe list for you yeah but like you know November you damage your skin I put you on a routine after the summer. Then by November, you're in good shape. We got an IPL, clean it up, and then you're ready. But this is, but it's, I want, I really, really want to drive this point home. It is strictly cosmetic, right? What we're getting rid of. It does nothing for skin cancers, pre-cancers, yep. nothing. This is about pigmentation, mm -hmm. stimulation of collagen, texture of the skin. It does not help you with pre-cancers or cancers at all. Okay. If there is one takeaway from this interview, what would you want it to be? Do a skin check every year. Mm -hmm. Insurance pays for that. Don't, don't skip it. It's not a good idea. You will regret it. Mm -hmm. It is not, you know, go to a dermatologist you like. It's a pleasant exam. In the meantime, you can talk a little cosmetics. Mm -hmm. You can do a little something, but do not skip the skin check. Yeah. Thank you. Thank sure. you for driving of that course. point home. Thank you for just explaining, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the basics. And I mean, a lot of these are big words and they're big terms, but it's important it that is. we know and understand the change. And just like as women, 
you know, we're getting into October, it's Breast Cancer Awareness mm -hmm. Month, mm -hmm. there's gonna be all this talk about breast check, self check. We should be looking at our skin in Definitely. the very same way. Definitely. Study our skin, what's the same? What's starting what's to change? On? Ask your dermatologist, what should I be looking at? Mm -hmm. Because your moles are different from the moles of anyone else. So ask them, which mole should I worry about? I take pictures of your mole, I make you take a, your own shots in your cell phone of a mole on your knee that I say, if this grows, look on your phone. Mm -hmm. If it grows, you call me. We'll get rid of that. That's so a great idea. That Your phone is your huge helper for skin checks. Take pictures of things, follow them, look at them, and come once a year. It's so easy and so fast, and it could save your life. Great, great, great message. And if you live with somebody, have them check areas yes. that you can't necessarily yes. see. Yes, look at each other's backs. Yep. Look at each other's back of your legs. The worst melanomas are always in your back and are always behind your legs because you can't see. see. If something changes in the middle of your forehead, immediately yep. you're going to see that. But on your back, so spouses should check each other's back, back of the leg, Every month, just do it on the first of every month. Can you look at my back? Can you look at the back? So then you both are safe. And mm -hmm. once a year you come to us, we look at you, we take pictures. We might do the dermatoscope I told you about to recheck. And then, you know, you're good for the year. And that would be a really good idea and save you trouble for the future. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers to you. <laughs> Cheers to you. And your gifted brain. I <laughs> always love so featuring much. super smart, intelligent <laughs> women who are out there to make a difference. And Marjorie, you are most definitely one of them. Thank, Thank you. you. So before I let you go, I asked my guests this, and I usually do it at the beginning, but I was so excited to launch in. <laughs> um, how do you plan on flourishing this week? Uh, flourishing. Yes. And what um, does that mean to you? You know, that means really having a good time with what I do. Mm. I mean, I'm one of the very lucky people like you who loves what we do. Yeah. I mean, I feel for people who work on things that they're not happy with. And I always tell them, change it, do whatever mm. it takes. I mean, for me, it's such a pleasure to wake up in the morning, go to work. And sure, sometimes there are crazy days. But still, at the end of the day, you feel like you made a difference. Yes. You made people happier and healthier. So I just plan on having fun the whole week with my patients, meeting amazing people that thanks to you, all your mm -hmm. followers are unbelievable. And I meet the most interesting people at my Aww. practice. So it's such a joy. And uh, this is what makes my day perfect. And then I spend good time with my daughter and it's absolutely wonderful too much homework for my case but still it's uh yes. good and as you know we participate with our kids and all yes, of that we do. so yes i will flourish by seeing amazing people and mm. enjoying those interactions i love it thank you again to let me for letting me come in it's always wonderful dominique and you reach so many people the oh. amount of people you brought to me that ended up having their skin checks and sometimes having to have little surgeries mm. here and there is incredible what you do for people is real service and you help them not only cosmetically and of course i have nothing against that we all want to look sure. our best and do our best but uh, also health wise and mm. in all aspects of life it's pretty incredible. I love working with you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a mutual admiration society here. So Yay. thanks, Marjorie. I appreciate Thank you too. You. She is so incredibly amazing and her energy, my goodness, I, you know, it's like she had five Red Bulls and she's like that all the time, all the time. So I just want you to know if you are listening to this podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, um, I am having a skin check because we've been talking about it during this podcast. And if you head on over to YouTube and watch it there, you will see Marjorie doing a skin check on me and taking a look at areas like I showed her on my leg that suddenly raised concern after being in the sun and just to show you what a, a normal skin check looks like. So I encourage you to come on over and take a look there. Um, I also encourage you to please rate, review, subscribe, share this podcast, help it to grow. Your feedback is very, very important to me. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section about any direction or areas that you would like me to explore here on Over 50 and Flourishing. 
Thanks so much for being with me today. So we finished taping the podcast. Marjorie stressed the importance of getting skin checks. And we said that I was coming in to get mine done. And I figure what a better way to show you than to have it done myself. I mean, That's I'm on it. the heels of, of summer like everybody else. Yes. And I've had my fair share of sun. So it's time. And I want you to show everybody what a skin check at a dermatologist's office is like. That's great. So we're going to do it and see that it's fast and mm -hmm. easy. And uh, really, we get it done once a year. Unless you have some issues with your skin, we'll recommend twice a year. But if not, once a year. Okay. So first of all, to do a skin check, you need a village. As you can see here, <laughs> I have my nurses, my PA. So we need uh, help to get everything done the right way. Okay. So Dominique, the way we start this is by looking at each area of your body, okay? So you can see some freckles. Dominique has some freckles, nothing out of the ordinary. So what is it that you don't want to see? You don't want to see, for instance, in an area like this, a big mold that does not match. Mm -hmm. You don't want things that don't match. When everything matches and it's more or less the same color, the same size, these are just the way she makes her freckles or her molds. So we always a look. freckle factory, Marjorie. Freckle. Yeah, that's because of all the fun sun, sun. my friend. I know. We did good oh, in the past. Yeah. So as you guys can see, see skin that never had the sun, beautiful, yeah. smooth, no pores, no freckles, and then, and then. some freckles. <laughs> so as I tell all my patients, we are born with the same skin. When you go to a newborn nursery, the baby's butt skin is the same skin as the face, the neck, everything. All the differences we see in life at our age are the result of what we did. Our skin right now should look exactly like the skin of our abdomen, buttocks, areas that never got the sun. So that, hope that convinces you to stop uh, getting too much sun. But Dominique became good. She used to be very bad now. <laughs> so then we go through your back and uh, it's very, very little spots and they're nothing concerning at all. So they all match, nothing calling the attention. Chest, many times you have the issue of a little mm. bit of redness because yes. the chest was exposed and the blood vessels become a little bit bigger. So, of course, protection of the chest, wearing rash guards when you're really going to be out there is mm. really important. And uh, if you ever see anything that is not matching, we have to take care of that. But And there's also, of course, a laser are called IPL at some point that we can do it to just get rid of the blood vessels and yeah. make it go back to normal. So then we look at the leg and we see moles. So for instance, we see this mole here, right, on her toe that we say, okay, is this a good one? It's two moles in an area. So then my PA, Heather, has this instrument that is called a dermatoscope. A dermatoscope is an instrument that it gets your skin like under a real microscope, right? And she can tell by the way the cells look under that if there are cells that are a little suspicious, if there are cells that are a little bit irregular. And uh, when she does that, she tells me this one should come out. So that's totally fine. That's totally yeah. fine. See? So you can see the mole there very big and uh, you can see that it's even. You're not seeing different color spots. You're not seeing marks in that mold. So that for us, that prevents a lot of biopsies, right? Mm -hmm. Because when I'm not very sure before we had the dermatoscope, we would be, okay, biopsy this, biopsy this. And biopsies are very small procedures, not anything scary. It's just a little scare, scratch on the skin. But still, if we can tell you that 80% chance that this was completely fine, it would be a much better situation without the need of cutting or anything like that. No, you're not bad. You don't Good. have... Uh, I thought we would see... A little photo ball here. <laughs> but, okay, you're checking my yoga to see how high I can lift my legs? Yes, okay. let's see how... Um, yeah. What was that? Oh, I burned myself. <laughs> okay. That doesn't, it's not a mole, okay? It's, a, no. it's just an accident. It's a story. So it's a story. <laughs> and then we always finish the skin check by looking into the scalp. So many, many times you can have dark pigmentation on your scalp, dark moles that we don't even know. 
How many times have we mm. ever looked and it's impossible for us to see the area of the scalp here. So yeah. this is a time when hairdressers save lives of mm -hmm. patients. I get every week at least a handful of patients that went to the hairdresser when they were washing your hair. They can see your yes. hair much more than anyone can when you're dry. And they send these patients to us to say, listen, something is going on. There's a mole on the back and you remove that and it was a panoma. Right. So always make sure you ask your hairdresser when you have your hair wet, do you see anything dark? Do mm. you see anything there? That's Should good. be concerned. You have nothing. No, your scalp is totally clear. Okay. No moles on the face. Yes. And she uses retin-A, so her skin's beautiful. So yes, this is it. See, we did a mole check. It took, what, 10 minutes? Not even that. It's nothing. And uh, there's absolutely nothing. One lesion called my attention, but my PA Heather just looked at it, told me everything is good. So, And we just checked a bunch of areas off off camera, obviously the abdomen and the lower back. Didn't want to overexpose myself here. Thank you, Marjorie. Everything sure. checked out great. So I don't have to come back for one year. One year? Yeah. But I'm going to have you back on the podcast before that. Okay. Yes. yes. I guess I'll be back before a year. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so you. much. And I hope that Thank this inspired you. you to get your skin checked. Please, guys, come over. Yes. Yeah.